and we'll go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everybody. We hope everybody's having a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, this is now the kickoff of October, so that begins the new month of new seasons, uh, but it's also manufacturing month. So there's a lot of great things going on, but this is also a great continuation of our work of charting the path. So if this is your first time, uh, welcome to our, our webinar series, our Guilford's Got Goals webinar series. This is uh, an alignment of our work with the My Future in C um, initiative that supports uh, addressing the skills gap uh, for individuals um, from uh, 22 to 40 uh, from now until 2030. We'll be focusing on our P My Triad Prosperity Zone. And we have been having convenings with all of our workforce entities uh, to really kind of delve in and address how we are supporting that skills gap and what we've learned. Uh, and knowing that we have a lot of great uh, foundation uh, resources here right in our backyard. I uh, do want to take this time to shout out our amazing planning committee. First, want to shout out our uh, our regional impact manager, Preston Roseboro. Wave your hand, Preston. Uh, but we also want to thank and appreciate our partners from the Community Foundation of Greater Greensboro, Ann Flint, uh, Laurie Burge Bargeboro from GTCC. We also have Dr. Uh, Manuel Dudley and Claire Ritchie from GTCC. Uh, we have uh, Chris Huntley from Shift Ed, Kanika Lawson uh, from Guilford County Schools, Career and Technical Education, uh, Tiffany Jacobs from the Forge Makerspace. We have uh, Dr. Ziti Nuello from uh, the Guilford Education Alliance, Brian Norris from Business High Point, uh, Grace Thompson from Junior Achievement. Um, we have so many partners, and I hope I didn't miss anyone. I'm going down my my. my mental Rolodex here, <laughs> but our, our planning partnership has grown so much, uh, but we are so thankful for everyone that's come together for this collective work. Uh, today's focus, we are going to be talking about apprenticeship opportunities for all, and one of the great things we can proudly say about Guilford County is that we have a strong foundation for apprenticeships diverse apprenticeship opportunities. And we are so excited to highlight two partners I'm going to share about the great work. We have Ms. Ann, Mrs. Ann Flint, who is the executive director for the Eastern Triad Workforce Initiative, as well as the Guilford Apprenticeship Partners. And we also have Ms. Laurie Barsberg, who is the apprenticeship coordinator for GTCC. So at this time, I will hand it over to our colleagues to talk about apprenticeship opportunities for all. We do ask for all of our attendees, if you would just mute your mics um, so you can get all this great information. We are recording, so we'll share this link out afterwards. Thank you, hand it over to you. Well, thank you, Melissa. Um, and good afternoon to everybody. Um, as Melissa said, Ann and I are going to tag team here to go over some of the opportunities for apprenticeship uh, that exist in Guilford County that cover a, a big uh, scope of the workforce. So there's opportunities for um, students as well as adults who are already potentially working. Um, so we're going to dive right into that. But first, I guess the question that needs to be uh, addressed is you know, what exactly is apprenticeship? What does that mean? Um, so the first thing to know is that apprenticeship is a uh, earn and learn model. And what that means is that apprentices come on board with a company, they are employees of that company, and they participate in training for a particular occupation. Um, part of that training happens on the job, and the other part of the training happens at a school or online, or as part of potentially company training that's available at the company itself. There's, there are several different ways that that can happen, um, but it is an earn and learn model. Uh, it, apprenticeship is something that is more longer term than, say, an internship or something like that. The minimum time for an apprenticeship is, generally speaking, one year. Um, some programs can go as long as fewer years, depending on what the program is. What you need to know is that registered apprenticeship in North Carolina will always have five components to it. I'm going to go over that in a minute. 
But how do you do those five components and implement these five components? There's a lot of flexibility in that. And those are the things that Ann and I are going to talk about, what, what options are available to you. But it's first important to know what the components or other registered apprenticeships are looks right there. So first, um, you need business involvement, an employer partner, somebody who is looking to have somebody trained in a particular occupation and who will bring that person on as an employee and also provide a mentor. That means a subject matter expert who can work and help train this employee as they're learning, as they're developing skills. The second thing is there is structure on the job training. And what that looks like is a lot of companies already have this, right? They have, um, you know, training plans, they have learning plans, they have, um, you know, lists of things that people need to know to move from one category of a position to another. So in the registered apprenticeship program, you would have what's called the competency list. And you would look at that and determine that in advance, what are the tasks and, and skills that the person needs for your particular company for them to achieve the occupation that you are training. That becomes part of your program. The third thing is there's related education. That's where I come from. Um, Guilford Technical Community College is a, an employer partner in Guilford County with a number of different companies across a wide variety of occupations. Uh, we have apprenticeship programs and things that range from manufacturing to IT to healthcare to HVAC and, and a lot of things in between. So, we have a lot of different programs and a lot of different program formats that can help you and your employees get that educational uh, component completed that they need. The fourth thing is there are rewards for skills gained. And what that means is that depending on the length of your program, you would establish an entry wage and a um, progressive wage scale as they're working their way through the program. In the case of, say, a program that's like three years long, as an example, you might choose to give somebody an uh, increase in wage every year, or you might decide to do it every six months. That's up to you. Um, as long as the person, as the apprentice, is progressing in their skills, progressing through their education, they're entitled to that, that wage. And then the fifth thing is they get a, they're called a journey worker credential, which is a recognition by the Department of Labor that they have achieved mastery of that occupation. They've done all the, all the educational components and all of the structure on the job training. And the, uh, Journey worker credential is recognized in all 50 states. Kind of like a nice little, you know, kind of bow on the gift when they have completed their program. So as I said, all those components are what makes up a registered apprenticeship. If you decide to have an apprenticeship program with your company, you would work with a representative from Apprenticeship NC who would help you develop these various components. They can help you with confidence lists. They can help you. We would all work together on that related instruction, and they could potentially help you determine what a good uh, wage progression rate would be. So those are the five components. And then I'm going to turn it over to Anne right now, and she will talk to you about just one of the models that are available to actually implement uh, an apprenticeship program. Anne? Okay. Thanks, everyone. Um, hi. Everyone, I'm Ann Flint. I'm the director of Guilford Apprenticeship Partners. Um, and I want to tell you a little bit about, about our program. Um, we are basically we're youth and youth apprenticeship program. We focus our attention to the youth. We recruit motivated high school juniors and seniors into the program, um, looking to build a talent pipeline. And one of the reasons we do this for high school students is because the state of North Carolina has something wonderful called a tuition waiver, 
which allows students who are in this registered program that's registered with the Department of Labor and the Apprenticeship NC with the state of North Carolina, that there's no reimbursement or exchanging of funds for the tuition for your student as long as they stay in that program for the completion of the apprenticeship program. So we have um, started this consortium. We have uh, about 32 different employers, and here's just a uh, you know a good list of of who is in our program. I would like to say we have companies from A to Z and everywhere in between. We have the city of High Point, city of Greensboro, Guilford County, as well as some smaller employers and some corporate larger ones. Um, but basically we work together. Um, we like to make sure that people understand that GAP is a partnership. It's not a program. It's not a one way fits all, but it's a framework. So we use that power of, consor of the consortium for our brand awareness. This is the start of our 10th year. Um, we have relationships with the school system, with GTTC, with um, the Greensboro and High Point Chambers, um, and Apprenticeship NC, so that you have that um, resources, as well as the resources from the other employers. So um, as you're establishing your program, um, you know, instead of recreating the wheel, you can talk to people who already are in the program as you develop your individual um, apprenticeship programs. Um, one of the strengths of GAP is that we have a lot of different offerings. And um, on the left, I'm not going to read them all to you, but these are our pathway, the main pathways that are companies that we recruit for right now. Um, so we start with advanced manufacturing, go all the way through accounting. Um, but basically this our offerings are based on what our employer partners want. And so this can vary from year to year, but say a company comes to us and they might be an advanced manufacturer, they might start a program um, and start recruiting students in the advanced ma manufacturing track, um, but they may see that they might need someone in accounting for their company as well. So you can add programs onto your existing program. Um, and through our, our GAP apprenticeship uh, partnership, um, all of our students with the exception of pharmacy tech are getting an associate's degree, journey worker certificate. Um, pharmacy tech is a little bit different. So they, we've established a program with Atrium Health to make it a, a two-year program because that's what they wanted. Um, but we have the ability to adjust what the different companies need. So we talked to the students about the things on the right or the outcomes, what the students get in our program. Um, typically our programs take four years to complete because they're getting that associate's degree, but you know it would take two years full time. They're working part of the time and going to school part of the time. So they're, they're getting that experience together. Um, and we're looking for students who are motivated, highly motivated students who are doing well. So these are not students who can't do something else, can't go to a four-year college, but maybe want to go to a four-year college and this is a way to get there. They want to get that experience and that work. Um, so our companies are usually kind of innovative in the sense that they realize this is a way to get talented people into the program at a young age so that they can kind of um, create that pathway and, and get them from the beginning so they don't have to unlearn any different, you know, bad skill sets. So we have a framework. So this is our, our timeline that generally that we go through. It's, if you see it, it kind of aligns with um, the regular school system uh, timeline. So um, we go through a recruitment, screening, and selection process. It's uh, something that we actually borrowed from Apprenticeship uh, 2000 in Charlotte. They were the first ones in North Carolina that had a, a youth apprenticeship program. So we followed their timeline. So we recruit. So one of the things I mentioned before is the power of the consortium. We recruit in all the schools that allow us in. So we go to all the local high schools, private schools, home schools, um, you know, anyone that will listen to us. Um, and then we have community nights. So we have events where the, the actual companies who are recruiting for students this year are um, going to be together. We are going to do that this year, October 24th or November and November 21st. So if you're an employer and you want to see how it works, we welcome you to come. Um, so we have parents and students coming out. They can start that one-on-one -on -one relationship. And then we actually have, we schedule company open houses and tours. So all of our GAP partners open their doors to these young individuals 
um, parents and students so that they can see what types of programs and what the workplace is going to be like and what the actual work is. So it's really an opportunity for career exploration as well. Um, and then we have a online application that we have students apply. And if they meet our basic criteria, we invite them in for a further look. We invite them to our invitationals. So these invitations are where we really get to know the students a little bit better. Um, these are in the evenings. We have them come multiple days in small groups. And we do all sorts of interviews, group projects, um, presentations. We want to see how they communicate and collaborate. Um, it's a way for the students to get to know the employers and the employers to get to know the students. And then at the end of that invitational process, we actually have students rank the companies in the order of where they want to be placed. And then we have a good old fashioned draft. So companies are in an, in essence, in the recruitment time, we're working together. And then once we get to the screening process, we're actually kind of recruiting against each other in a way, but we, we try to make it so that there's a win-win. We want as, as many students that are um, motivated to be placed in, in, in these companies. And then we, with the exception of the pharmacy tech, we have a pre-apprenticeship. So the students are sign on for a pre-apprenticeship. They have six weeks. So it's six weeks for you as the employer to test them out, but six weeks for the student to kind of test the company out and see if this is really what they want to work in and what they really want to do. So we, we run that in the summer. And then um, if they're successful and the student wants to sign on and the company wants to sign them on, then we actually have a signing ceremony where we're signing on the new students and graduating those that are um, finishing the program. It's a wonderful event. We have it every August in, in the middle of the month. And we invite you to come um, as we work towards that. So this is sort of our timeline. And um, we adjust it as, as we go. But it's it's a pretty strong vetting process. So one of the things we we really um, bring up to the students and which just gets our, our their attention is that this is a promising career. These apprenticeship programs, they're employees of the company, like Lori said. Um, they get all the they get paid. Their books, tuition, fees are all paid for. Their college class time as well as their work time is paid for, and they're working towards that college degree with zero debt. So um, if you're interested about GAP, um, please reach out to me after we're, you know, over with the presentation. You can look on our website at gapnc.org. But this is just one model. Um, we think it's the best, um, but there are other ways to do it. And Lori's going to tell you about that. But, you know, it, it, we're a proven model where we really kind of spearheaded youth apprenticeships in the state of North Carolina. We're really proud of our program and we welcome, you know, partnerships with everyone um, and look forward to working with you all. And I'll pass it back to Lori. Thank you, Anne. So one of the newer programs um, that exists in Guilford County and uh, we were, GTCC is very proud to be named a FAME partner and it's the Federation of Advanced Manufacturing Educators. Um, this is a program, it's, it's got a very narrow focus because it is for people who are trained to go into being an advanced manufacturing technician. And what that means is they would be working on anything having to do with automated systems. So some of the uh, partners in this program are companies like Toyota Battery, uh, P&G, Piper Mill, um, Apple Automation, Villa Bay, certain you know, companies like that. Um, and it's a very intensive two-year program where the students study mechatronics. But in addition to that, they're also getting courses in safety culture, 5S, lean manufacturing, problem solving, machine reliability, and professional skills. So they really learn, you know, how to make presentations, how to implement 5S in the workspace what we manufacturing is all about. All of those sorts of things in addition to, like I said, an intensive study of, of mechatronics. For those who may not know, mechatronics is kind of a blend of electrical elect and electronic uh, forces. So students do everything from circuit analysis to programmable logic controls, robotics, automation, things like that. And they spend two days a week at school, and believe these are full days, and three days a week at work. Um, there's no age uh, 
they don't have to, there is a minimum because they have to be uh, high school graduates. Um, but and some of the companies only hire them if they're 18 or above. Uh, but there is no age maximum. So we have students in the program from 18 into, I know there's one who's at least 35, and there may be even one or two older than that. So there's an option for, for anyone who is interested in this type of work. And the consortium is the famed first in flight chapter and is the first one in North Carolina. I would imagine it's probably probably going to be the first for only a period of time and there will be others, but Right now, we're the only one in this house here at uh, GPCC. So, um, if you would like more information about that or you need more information, we can talk about that later on. Um, the next uh, option for people is to have an independent program. And what that means is that a company has the ability and the right to work with a consultant to do apprenticeship and say, establish their own program and you don't have to work with any of the consortiums if they don't want to. But then what that means is that they're they're out there kind of by themselves, uh, right? Um, the one, some of the pros about it are that it's the most flexible program design because, you know, if the consortium has rules on certain things, you know, you kind of have to go along with what the consortium rules are. If you're, if you're a standalone company and you're a standalone program, you can kind of write it however you want to do it. Um, you can also begin a program at any time. Um, you know, GAP and FAME both operate on the same time frame as a school year, but if somebody decides in you know, the middle of the year they want to begin an apprenticeship program, they can do so for, for you know, by having their own program not to impart consortium. It also works well in an instance where you find to upskill incumbent employees. And this happens a lot. You know, you have an employee who is a really good employee. They they want to do more. The company wants to develop them, and uh, they'll put them in a friendship program to make sure that they're matched with the mentor. That the expectations are really clear on everybody's end about what's going to happen for that period of time where they're doing the training, where they're doing the training. It also works well for companies with an established brand because if they advertise. An apprenticeship opportunity and they're a big recognized name, they're more likely to get, uh, you know, applicants than, than a company that doesn't have the same global name. The cons in this model are you don't get any recruitment help, right? It's all on with. And as Ann mentioned with GAP, GAP goes into all the different uh, high schools, the public high schools, private high schools, you know, in Guilford County. The odds are if you're just an independent company and you start calling Guilford County Schools and I want to come in and do a presentation about my company, you're not going to get the same level of welcome as Guilford County Schools. Not that they're trying to be ugly or anything, it's just that there's not enough time in the school day to have, you know, 50 different companies call come in and all do a presentation about their company. So they prefer to work with the, with the gap because they're coming in and they're specifically focused on youth and they I mean, can represent a lot of different companies at one time. The other thing is you're going to be in competition with these consortiums. Um, some of them are larger companies. Uh, feel for apprenticeship partners because of their relationship with the schools, because of their community outreach, because of the length of time they've been doing this, you know, people know about them. You know, there's a lot of, I work with apprentices now who are younger siblings of older students who have maybe are graduating or have already graduated. So the word is out there and they know about it. Um, the other thing is you would not have any support and experience with lawyer partners, which we have alluded to a little bit. Um, and that's and as, as somebody who is neither an employee, an employer partner um, or the director, you know, as somebody who they, I consider myself pretty, um, unbiased in the whole situation, sometimes that's one of the greatest things that I get to see is the companies helping one another out and implementing programs and answering questions and helping those who are new to GAP kind of get on to those faster. So, um, but independent programs do have their place and I work with companies who do this as well as companies who work with consortiums. So I just want to put that out there as an option for people. And again, I'm happy to answer that. 
moving forward. Um, this slide just has really quickly uh, a few little bullet points about each option so that we can kind of keep those straight in line. Um, and is there anything you want to add to what's on here? Or? Um, uh, I think I think it's pretty self-explanatory. One one thing I did for I failed to mention too is that you know gaps in its tenth year, like I said, but we have about 170 students currently in the program, so we've got that strong number. Um, and you know, I think um, you know all the programs have merit. It just depends what your what works for your company. Um, it's worth kind of looking into what's the best fit and finding out. Um, what can work best for you. So um, I think one of the strengths for GAP is that we have multiple occupations and we have the ability to add occupations. So if you're, if that list I put up earlier of different tracks that we have um, is not something that you're looking for, they're, you know, we're not closed off to that. That's a discussion that could be had. And then just one other quick note, and that is doing one option does not uh, keep you from doing others. So there are companies that are in multiple consortiums. There's companies that have an independent program and also do GAP or, you know, so there's there's a number of ways of implementing an apprenticeship in a particular so, um, I think with that, if there's any questions, um, we have our, our content, we can either take them now or we have our email address up here. Um, and we'd be happy to speak to you about any questions that you have. I think, uh, see our, anything in the chat real quick? Let's see. I think it was a request for the California presentation. Sure. Yes. So we will uh, be sending out this uh, presentation as well as the link uh, following this meeting. Um, so this is for Ann and Lori. We, we make sure, you know, with a lot of the partners that we feature that these are in alignment with this initiative. What is one thing that you would need from the partners that are on the line here that could help best support the great work you are doing in the apprenticeship space? What is some, how can we support you to enhance this program even more? Well, I think for GAP is just to get the word out because it's amazing every year. You know, we have a timeline, the applications are due the end of January. Um, but every year I get a barrage of emails, phone calls, people begging to get their students in in the spring. So to let people know just an awareness of the program, that's a possibility. And that we go to all the high schools because sometimes the high, the communication within the high school, it's not because of anybody, you know, trying to keep people out, but the students don't always get the message. So to let them know that we're, we're around and we're available. Um, and those community nights, if, you know, we, I'm going to send out a flyer, I can send that to you, Melissa, too, maybe yeah. you can do that. So, you know, if, if you want to learn more and talk to the individual companies about it, um, that would be great. Perfect, perfect. I think Preston, did you have a comment? I just thought I saw something pop up. Uh, I was just telling Ann and Lori, great job. But um, okay. <laughs> I did have one question for Lori. Lori, have you seen any employers uh, using tuition assistance or reimbursement to support apprentices going through a, an apprenticeship program? Well, yeah. So in the in the gap model, they don't have to do that because the right. students get the tuition waiver. But in other models, yes, they do. Um, there are some companies who will pay everything. There are some companies who have, you know, yearly amounts of benefit that they will have students. So it just depends on the company. And again, that there's that's where the flexibility is. And in, in, if you have an independent program, there's people who are in an apprenticeship program that are older than high school, you can figure out what you want that to look like. And Nicole, I see your and hand is raised. We, oh, we have also at the school, just, just for, in a general sense, it's not just for apprentices, but you know, if somebody who has graduated uh, from a Guilford uh, County High School within the past five years, they can get uh, potentially access to something called the Access Amazing Scholarship. And how that works is they would apply for federal financial aid, they would be reviewed for federal and state financial aid, and anything that, that's left over 
um, would be paid by the access and easement scholarship. So there's there's really a lot of resources available for people to be able to attend school um, and and not have out of pocket costs or the employer not even have out of pocket costs. And then the second thing I want to put out there is not all programs necessarily have to have a degree capacity, right? You can do apprenticeship programs based on workforce classes if that's if that's what you're trying to do. So those are options available as well. Thank you. And Nicole, I see your hand. Yes, thank you. Um, I just want to share two things. So currently, and this work started earlier this year, uh, Dr. Oakley, the superintendent of Gilbert County Schools, she has um, different initiatives throughout the district. And so she's tasked people within the district to work on these initiatives. And one of the initiatives is actually apprenticeships. So we've been working and meeting with the, a team, um, some of my team um, is on this call, Kanika uh, Lawson, Dr. Renee Dow. Um, we also have uh, Wanda Ramos um, from the State Apprenticeship Office and um, one more, Mr. Leeper, he's another person from the district. But we're working to create goals around um, increasing apprenticeship opportunities. And so some of our goals actually include uh, marketing. So I'm happy to hear you say that, Anne. And so Anne and Lori will probably be reaching out to you all as we're working on these goals and to get your input and so forth. And um, the second thing I want to lift up is that Gilbert County Schools has a pre-apprenticeship program, SOAR. And um, so, you know, we're constantly looking for um, businesses to be a part of that. So um, before they get to AN and the FAME program and any other apprenticeship programs, they can go through our pre-apprenticeship programs with the school district. So. Excellent point. I'm glad you brought that in. That's that's one of the great things about our area. So that what makes us uh, stand out is that we literally have the the uh, capacity to create or have a pre apprenticeship opportunities, which is that early exposure, but also they can then transition into registered apprenticeship programs, continuing that work even with other uh, separate entities that have their own uh, apprenticeship programs uh, that target adults. So it's great that we have the full landscape here in Guilford County to support individuals, whether they are a, a student, even to an adult in the apprenticeship space. So thank you so much for sharing that. So I, I do any other comments or anything, any comments or questions? So just some quick announcements before we close out. Oh, great, Chris said awesome. Uh, <laughs> We will be sharing this uh, after this meeting. So thank you so much, Anne and Lori, for this amazing presentation. We are so proud and in full support of all the great work uh, that we have with the GAP program and with GTCC. Um, one of the things that we wanted to highlight was why we wanted to share this was that in connection to my future NC is that the students that are in this program are getting that early exposure to those in-demand careers, but those in-demand technical skills that sometimes get overlooked. So this is why this is important when we're addressing that skills gap and why the, the framework of having an apprenticeship model is key. But I know one thing that Laurie and Ann also said is just the fact that how this can be, this can be replicated. Um, the consortium model we've seen has been quite beneficial for employers to partner on. This certainly could be seen and replicated in, in other models and with other entities uh, to continue that great work in the apprenticeship space. So we certainly want to give kudos for y'all for all the amazing work that you're doing to support the students here in Guilford County and also for the employers. If you're an employer with the GAP program, uh, give yeah, an emoji, wave your hand, smile, heart, something. <laughs> we want to see who you are. We saw I I thought there was some on the on the call. Good. The financial. I saw City of Greensboro. On. Think that uh, oh, County was on. So thank you all for all the great work there. Um, do have one thing. Our work, our charting and path, charting the path work continues. Um, we are going to be having another quarterly meeting that will be in November. So just save that date. Um, but if you would like to uh, present on the work that you're doing and how uh, this collective can support 
just reach out to us. Um, we're still finalizing that agenda, but it will be in Greensboro. We, we try to switch it up. Our last in-person meeting was in High Point. This next one will be in Greensboro. So just be on the lookout uh, for that special invitation. If there's individuals that you feel need to be a part of this conversation, no date yet, Nicole. We'll have one very soon, uh, probably with the next few days. Um, we will, um, if, you, if there's individuals that you feel need to be part of this work, let us know. We'll make sure they receive that invite. I know Preston would want us to share about the endorsement opportunities. Um, all of our uh, partners have endorsed this initiative, so we'll make sure we include that in our correspondence on how you can do that uh, direct uh, connection and support as well. Uh, anything from our team that I'm missing or have overlooked? Okay. Okay, good. So thank you so much. We took about eight minutes over, but it's okay. We had some good conversations. <laughs> um, we want to thank you all again. We'll get that information out to you uh, and have a wonderful day. And we'll just keep everyone in our thoughts for that have been impacted by the hurricane. Please keep us, keep them in our thoughts. And if you know of any type of initiatives or uh, resource or anything that's going on, let us know. We want to be able to support however we can. Thank everybody so much and have a great day. Thanks, boys. Bye-bye. Bye. Y'all have a good day. Goodbye.